a lot of young kids look up to me now and I can give back. But at times, you know, tennis is it's a shit sport, like. Love him or hate him. There are few sports people more watchable, few tennis stars as authentic, and none more mischaracterized than Nick Kyrgios. The 27-year-old Aussie has certainly been polarizing at the best of times, yet he's never failed to put bombs on seats. Say what you will, he is great for the game. Today, we're going to take a look at a brief history of King Kyrgios and analyze what heights he could potentially reach and what may or may not stop him from doing so. Let's go down to the tennis court and talk it up like yeah. Nicholas Hilmi Kyrgios was born in the nation's capital of Canberra during April of 1995. His father worked as a painter and is of Greek origin, whereas his mother moved to Australia from Malaysia, having previously gone by the title of princess, as she was a member of the Selangor royal family. Despite the somewhat extravagant family heritage, the childhood of Kyrgios was very normal. Like most young kids who turn into endless balls of energy, he gravitated towards anything within sight. Football, basketball, AFL, and tennis to name a few. However, it was the one with a ball and racket which Nick became accustomed to. His first love, however, basketball, would have to take that title. To this day, Kyrgios plays basketball to pass the time and is an avid supporter of the Boston Celtics. Standing at six foot four, Nick would certainly consider taking basketball more seriously as his natural height and athleticism are gifts most would only dream of possessing. Despite the temptations, these gifts translated more fluidly on the tennis court. So at the age of 14, after playing casually for seven years, he decided to dedicate himself to going pro. Only two years later, he gained a full scholarship at the Australian Institute of Sport, where he was able to further progress his tennis. Like most aspiring players, Kyrgios would travel to whatever tournaments he could find. This would include traveling to Fiji at just 15 years of age to win his first ITF junior title, before making his Grand Slam debut as a junior at the Australian Open just one year later. However, he faced a round three exit after gaining valuable experience. In 2012, at the age of 17, Kyrgios would turn pro and make his name in the junior scene in both singles and doubles tournaments. Andrew Harris, his doubles partner at the time, and Kyrgios would go on to win the junior doubles in both Roland Garros and Wimbledon. In 2013, he would defend his junior doubles title at Wimbledon by recruiting his good mate, Tanasi Kokonakis. They would go on to win their first title together. In the same year, Kyrgios would win his only junior Grand Slam title against Kokonakis at the Oz Open. He would become the junior world number one just as he was about to enter the professional arena. While still a junior, Kyrgios was given his first taste at the main draw of Grand Slam after fellow countryman John Millman withdrew due to injury. This provided an opportunity for Kyrgios to earn his first ATP win over former world number eight, Radak Stapanik. He would be dispatched by Marin Silak in the second round. Making this leap into the tournament caused his singles ranking to rise, especially after qualifying for the US Open in the same year. Nick Kyrgios became a household name in the tennis world practically overnight during the year of 2014. And for good reason, he defeated world number one, Rafael Nadal in four sets against all odds after entering the tournament as a wild card. He became the first male debutant to reach the quarterfinals of Wimbledon since Florian Mayer in 2004. The types of adjectives being thrown around to describe his game included freakish, audacious, and ridiculous. The thought of Kyrgios defeating Nadal was laughed at by the likes of John McEnroe. Although, when you look at the caliber of players he beat that year prior, it really isn't all that surprising. These included world number seven, Richard Gasquet, Sam Groff, and veteran Serb, Filip Krajnovic. The aggressive, no-fear style of play that the 19-year-old showed against one of the greatest to ever play the game was certainly intriguing. With legends of the game, such as Pat Cash noting, 
If this kid isn't a multiple-time Grand Slam winner, something has gone seriously wrong. Paul Anacone, former coach of Roger Federer, said, I think Nick is the most talented player since Roger jumped on the scene. The talent was too much to ignore. He possesses an electric serve, which hits speeds of 230 miles per hour, which is widely regarded as the best in the game. And not be serious. Hang on. That just happened. This is accompanied by a dangerous yet consistent backhand, with the ability to blast a forehand down the line before you can even blink. Mix this in with a world-class slice and what some would describe as a diabolical underarm serve and you have the recipe to be anyone in the world when you want to and he has done just that. Nick Kyrgios is just the third player after Leighton Hewitt and Dominic Herbati to be every member of the big three. The first time he played them, dare I say, and don't come for me in the comments with the pitchforks, he is the alpha male on the tennis court regardless of who he is playing. He might not be the greatest human being, most kind soul, or even the better player, but he does possess that ability to get you in your emotions and make you look foolish if you try and beat him at his game. Let's be honest, we wouldn't care about the fact that he has raked in over $800,000 in fines for racket abuse, verbal abuse, and unsportsmanlike conduct if he was some talentless player who stumbled onto the tennis scene. We care because we know his potential. We have seen it. There may be a small minority who watch him to see a potential train wreck. However, I'd argue most tune in to see if he'll finally reach his potential, not necessarily to see if he'll implode on the way there. The tennis enthusiast can't stand him, and I can understand why. Being a hot-tempered guy with little respect for authority in a game traditionally for the upper class isn't going to sit well with that crowd. It's frustrating to his fans as well. He honestly probably does. <laughs> Knowing that he can beat anyone on his day and letting minuscule things irritate him is not easy to watch. But it's the moments of brilliance that remind us there is still a potential champion on the court. This is crazy good right now from the Australian. Kyrgios is without a doubt misunderstood. He's already an Aussie icon, and the judgmental mob which dissects his every misstep neglects one critical point. Professional sport is about entertainment. It's a real life drama. It's a movie with the actors playing themselves. In the purest sense of the word, Kyrgios is entertaining. You cannot possibly argue against this. When the cameras weren't rolling, Kyrgios would often be huddled in hotel rooms by himself, struggling with alcohol, drugs, and depression. When most were quick to forget, he was still a teenager. You know, I came back home from a night out. My dad was just next to me, just crying, basically just saying, look, like you've got to stop all this. Like, it's, you just got to stop it. And that's when it kind of clicked to me. My dad never cries. Like, he's a strong man. He, um, you know, he gets disappointed easily, which is almost worse. But when he started crying, I was like, I've got to stop. Like, I've got to really fix this and turn this around. And I stand here today and, uh, um, you know, I, I just can't believe that I'm here feeling the way I feel, what I've achieved and able to just speak so freely about it. It's, it's insane. From, a, from two years ago, I never thought I'd be in this position. He got past that and seems to thrive in team environments, having had plenty of success in Davis Cup. Lever Cup and recently winning his first official major title alongside Kokonakis in Melbourne earlier this year. Nick, I love you, brother. This is, uh, man, I just, I know that this big boy is going to be out tonight, so ladies, let's go. <laughs> so what will stop him from reaching his potential? Himself. Simple as that. If he continues to come up against players who are hungrier to win and love the game more, he'll fall short. But dare I say, I think he's found the love for the game again. Things seem to be on the up. But let's get one thing straight. Nick Kyrgios doesn't owe us anything, other than a cracking game of tennis. Beyond that, he enjoys the position he finds himself in today, thanks to his own hard work and talent. The ungrateful narrative often spouted by out-of-touch boomers and Facebook mothers essentially comes down to the model minority stereotype. There will always be a small subsection of sports fans 
who reject athletes who show a bit too much of themselves on the field. A ponytailed and often grumpy Leighton Hewitt took a while to become the determined little street fighter we know him as now. The late great Shane Warne had obvious pitfalls as a national icon. Like Warne, Kyrgios is sure to mature and likely mellow a touch as he gets older. Just sit back and enjoy the ride. What is your favorite Kyrgios match or moment? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and we will catch you in the next one.